Joined now by Vicki McKenna for our weekly culture cast. Vicki, thanks for being here today. Ah, oh, my pleasure. Good. I'm always glad to see you. And so we've got another situation in Wisconsin. We, because of you have such a popular and uh, important radio program, and I say this all the time, uh, I've seen radio talk show hosts across, across country. Not only are you as good as any of the men out there, you actually are doing it from a, a bigger handicap in many ways. And so uh, you, your voice has really become a huge, important voice in Madison and Milwaukee, all across Wisconsin, about these issues. And so a lot of moms and dads are writing to you for help, for would you read this over the air. Please help me get my message out. Talk about the latest example of this. The latest example is a mother who reached out on behalf of her son, uh, who has been exposed to a history curriculum. And she had some questions. She, she's been very cued into the discussions about CRT, um, about so, so some of the critical race theory stuff and critical theory stuff. And so she was wondering whether or not her son's history assignment, the history curriculum that was presented to her um, is CRT. Well, it, it, it's critical theory, certainly, but it's not CRT per se. So she said, you know, it just seems a little off to me. She sends me the curriculum, which includes nothing more than popular articles in publications like Vox.com, The Atlantic, New York Times, New Yorker Magazine, all periodical posts um, written by popular, uh, you know, opinion writers. And it's all about how everything about America that has ever supported anything that could be considered pro-Trump is fascist, is neo-Nazi, is uh, is extremist. And so the entire class is focused on on declaring that anyone who disagreed, who who supported President Trump and disagreed with the progressives is alt-right is not right fascist. There's one about specifically about conservative women and how conservative women are neo-Nazis, the ones who supported Trump, because of course they betrayed uh, abortion rights. Uh, About the Proud Boys, which are a group that was formed to push back against Antifa, how they're alt-right fascist neo-Nazis. The whole thing is again, uh, you know, trying to, to, to spread the poisonous narrative that anybody who disagrees with the progressive left, who disagrees with the social justice warriors, who disagrees with the, you know, the, the wokeism of, of American education is by definition fascist. Mind, mind you, fascist being redefined as anybody who disagrees with progressives. And this is in this is the official curriculum. Yep, and as, as Vicky's been talking about this all through this segment, Mike's going to keep flashing some of these examples. And notice one thing here. These are not textbooks. This is one of the great dangers of your modern kids' modern education. There's no textbook for this class. You can't demand to see a textbook. What you get instead is a number of these, as you, as Vicky pointed out, they are radical left-wing publications in radical left-wing journals uh, on the internet. There's no balance here. There's no attempt whatsoever to provide a second uh, opinion. I mean, as bad as American textbooks are. They're not this bad is what I'm trying to say. The textbooks are horrible, but at least they occasionally try to suggest that there's another point of view. These are just screeds. Can you imagine creating a- It's just opinion screeds. It is. Just opinion screeds. This is creating a class based on radical left-wing writers only. To, to, to prove to children too young to know better about how anybody who disagrees with radical leftism is a Nazi. Well, and look at the story. And I don't know if you could pull up that picture one more time. There's a story, um, a, a, a publication about Kyle Rittenhouse calling him a vigilante, suggesting that he went to Kenosha to hunt down people. That is manifestly and provably false. It's provably false. This young man hasn't even faced trial yet. And he has been convicted as, as a, you know, a 17-year-old vigilante who grabbed a gun to go mow people down in Kenosha, 100% provably untrue. And that's before a trial would ever take place on, on what happened in Kenosha. That's the kind of, of warped, bent uh, narrative that we see coming out of, out of the public schools. But you made a great point. At least textbooks pretend sometimes to prevent balance. I've seen some bad ones, particularly in history, but sometimes, but at least they pretend that there are two sides here. This is no, there's no pretense whatsoever. This is straight up spoon fed left-wing pablum to make sure the narrative sticks. 
And if the mother had not been suspicious and not asked directly to look at what they were reading, this never would have come out. This is pretty staggering. Yeah. The, 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 like you mentioned, pretty much every aspect of conservatism, of republicanism, of being Christian, of being male, and of being white female now makes you a Nazi. After the break, let's talk a little bit more about what this means long term for American uh, values as we turn these kids back out into the streets. Back again with Vicki McKenna for the second half of our Culture Cast broadcast. Vicki, so what do we do about this? We now know everything. You, you and I spent the last dozen years, Home and I mean school. it. A, a dozen years we've spent warning till we were blue in the face about this, and now it's happened. Now the schools have become unpenetrable, unreformable places of radical anti-Americanism. And it doesn't really matter what you think. It doesn't really matter how many school boards you go to and scream at them. It doesn't really matter. Nothing's going to stop them. They have the complete consent of government at the highest levels. They're being supported and abetted by the tech companies, uh, the Planned Parenthood and radical left-wing organizations, LGBTQ organizations are writing this curriculum. They're getting all of this done, and there's not much a, a taxpaying mom can do. So what does this mean? Oh, we... you, you're, fund you're funding it to the tune of tens and tens of billions of dollars in Wisconsin, a trillion dollars nationally, you're writing the check for it. And, there, and you're right, Duke, there's nothing you can do. The teachers unions will say, we'll do whatever we wanna do. You can complain. The best that I have seen the Republicans offer up uh, in the state of Wisconsin is a bill that did not pass uh, it passed the legislature, but of course uh, was not signed into law by Governor Evers that would have provided transparency. So parents can have their noses rubbed into uh, what their kids are being taught in school. Um, that's the best, um, you, you know, to, to, to say, okay, now moms and dads, it's in your lap. You go find a lawyer, sue the school district. Um, if, you, if you disagree with what the school is teaching your kid, sue the school district. I've had parents who've tried to sue the school district and can't find a lawyer to take the case because the lawyers are already employed by the, uh, employed by the school district. So yeah, you're, you're on your own. So what do you do one more time? And maybe people are sick of hearing this, but if it takes you a year to do it, find a way to shore up your finances so that you can homeschool your children, period, period, period. Failing that, find the resources so that you can put your child in a private school, a decent private school that doesn't have a social justice curriculum. And the, and the thing that I think legislatively we should work on um, is, is to mandate that all parents are able to take their dollars with them when they transfer their kid to a new school or homeschool their kids. Um, but failing, th that's, that's not that radical. And that seems like a mountain to climb right now. Yeah, we need a system not where it's charter or vouchers, where that money is abetted by state money, at which point the state gets to tell you what to do. This, right. is, this is before you take one tax dollar away in, in real estate or property taxes. That's, that, belong, that education money belongs to parents. Let them spend it. And if they spend it on non-public school options, then that gets deducted from what they owe you in the public schools. Right. No, none of this double paying now. The, 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 the mom and dad has to pay inherently for all these public schools, even if they are doing anti-American, anti-family things, and then the parents still have to find ways to pay for other schooling. No, no, no. We got to fix that from the top, the bottom up. And the other thing I would say related to this too is about culture. You and I, in, a, in the segment we did last week, Vicky, we talked about why are Americans so tepid in their protests, right? Why they're willing to protest, they're willing to heckle, but they're not going to do, this is the bottom line, Americans still, when it comes to their children's education and a lot of other issues, they're willing to be upset, they're willing to go to a school board, but they're not willing to actually do the things that will protect their kids, like get them out of the schools. What is it about Agreed. the American I people? That's a good question. And I mean, I'm, I'm heartened to see all the parents show up at school boards. It's important that you go to school boards because if you can, and again, you, you, need, you need to make your school board fear you. And when I mean fear, fear losing their job, fear exposure, fear attention, make them fear you. The left made them fear the left. And so that, that, has to, that script has to be flipped. Um, while that is happening though, get your kids protected. There is nothing that is going to change. Listen, the point of education is not teaching your child to read. Look at the scores. It is not to teach your child to do math at grade level. Look at the scores. You have 
Fewer than 40% of children in Wisconsin schools are proficient at reading and math. Would you buy a car that only worked 40% of the time? Hell no, you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't lay out $1 for that, but we are funding the destruction of this nation and the poisoning of your children's souls and and the deconstruction of your entire core value system. We are funding it with billions of dollars And people have to start rethinking how they're going to approach this. You need to lay into the legislature. You need to show up at your school board meetings. But while this is going on, find ways to squirrel away enough resources so you can get your kid out of that environment. Until that happens, you deprogram your child every single night.